We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. Nick Barris here. Do you trust me? I hope you trust me. You know, only 14% of Americans have a strong trust in their journalists. Of course, if you have more of a personal relationship like we do with your journalists, maybe you trust them a bit more. I don't know. We're talking about the First Amendment, freedom of press specifically right now, freedom of journalism. With us is Ken Paulson. He's the uh, director of the Free, Free Speech Center at MTSU, and I appreciate him coming on. We can take some calls if you have a thought on this as well, or sit back and listen because Ken's terrific. 737-7587. So uh, as we went to the break, uh, you know, I made the, the point of, of the Ferris Doctrine. Some people may be going, huh, what's that? And I don't know, and maybe you don't agree with me, but when the Fairness Doctrine basically went the way of the dodo bird, um, there was no longer a requirement for media to basically tell both sides of the story. So we do have slanted media on both sides, and the slanted media is not balanced, and so you've got people just watching what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear. And I think that has a, a big role in where we are today, along with social media. What do you think? Well, I, I agree with, uh, particularly with the notion that we now have people who are not real journalists, uh, and and basically they are partisans and propagandists, and that's on the left and the right. And people are able to watch, let's let's call them out, Fox News, and and MSNBC, and and take a warm bath in what they already believe, but never see the opposite. And and because these people are in suits, they're well dressed, they call themselves journalists, right? People think they've had their daily diet of news. I will say, though, Nick, uh, before we get back to the point about the Fairness Doctrine, the encouraging thing about the survey the Freedom Forum did is it actually ranks uh, by trust levels, the various news media. And at the top of that list is PBS. You know, the PBS Daily News Hour is outstanding. It's an hour. It's, it's actually dull, <laughs> not provocative. Lots of charts and graphs, but it's really good and balanced. You know, and Ken, then, Ken, you know, in, 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 in college, I just want to say, in college, um, I interned with what was the McNeil Lair News Hour, and it was wonderful. I got to know Jim Lair and Robin uh, McNeil and Les Crystal, and just having a front row seat of how they do things. And behind the scenes, it's the same way on TV. Dry, straightforward, to the point, and boy, they're deadly serious and extremely fair. I mean, that, that's right. a, so an internship can, shaped who I am today. Uh, and I had the opportunity to to know both, especially Robin McDale. And anyway, great people. Yeah. They took their stewardship very seriously. And then you look at their list of trust, and both local newspapers and local television rank relatively high, and they should. Uh, the networks rank a little higher, uh, NBC, CBS, ABC. And at the bottom are Fox and, S and MSNBC. MSNBC. So, um, there is a recognition about, among some Americans that there is quality news and there is news that is not to be bothered with. I mean, if you want to watch these highly biased uh, networks, that's your choice, but view it as entertainment, not as news. Uh, to a broader point, um, people talk about the media being biased, you know, as well as anybody. What in the world do we regard as the media? First exactly. of all, it's plural. Yeah. But, but, uh, you're going to put the Tennessee in and, and uh, you know, Rush Limbaugh's old show and and uh, and Friends reruns and newspaper columns. You know, there are probably 500,000 media outlets that people have access to in America in one form or another. They don't all meet every Tuesday night at the press club to plan world domination. Uh, they are independent. They are they are most are honest gatherers of news. And so the notion of media bias is largely driven by those very same partisan news networks we're talking about. Cable television survives by provoking, mm -hmm. by angering, right. uh, or by affirming people's biases. That's not American journalism. American journalism can be found in town after town across this country. The work you do, the work the folks at the Tennessean and the scene do, that's American journalism. That's the media. And they're the people, by and large, you should be trusting. Yeah, and that's what people need to remember, and I, I think they've forgotten this, is that you know you go to be trained as a journalist, and uh, there's so many out there that are not, um, and, and they're succeeding. But to me, I mean, train to be a journalist, I mean, you want to get accurate information, you want to be fair, and that's really the key. To me, above all else, what I learned going through, through college at Northwestern and the like 
was you need to tell both sides of the story, you be fair, and my opinion matters zilch. You lay it out there, okay? okay? And that is what a true journalist says. Now, sometimes there are going to be stories where there may really only be one side. And if that's the case, or if it's a negative story with regard, you tell it as fairly as you can. But it seems like people have forgotten that. It drives me nuts. I go, oh, Nick, you're, you know, sometimes on my Facebook page, oh, you're MSM, mainstream media. I, I, you know, these people have no clue what they're talking about. They don't know the definition of journalists. There has never been ever a day in my career here at News Channel 5 where I wouldn't be here, where I sat in a news meeting where the bosses that be said, hey, Nick, we're going to do this story today, and you're only going to tell that side because we don't agree with this other. That has never happened, and it should never happen in any reputable news organization. Unfortunately, we know it does happen in places. It's that simple. Get right. it straight. It doesn't happen here, period. Right. And and I'm sure you've had the same experience I've had. You've never been in a meeting where somebody said, let's get this SOB. Yeah. Um, you would be fired immediately for that. Mm -hmm. We are professionals. Journalists are professionals, just like lawyers or physicians, and they do their jobs. And, and you know, the other thing that people missed is that so many journalists, myself included, you know, we work all over the country. I, I've been in New Jersey. I was editor of the Green Bay Press Gazette, you know, Washington, D.C., two markets in Florida. And even though I cared about each of those communities, I have to be honest, as a journalist, I had no emotions invested in the outcome of the city council race. Mm -hmm. I was there. <laughs> I was there for four years to do my job and hopefully to do well. And you moved on to the next market by being a good journalist, not by being trying to curry favor with one party or another. Journalists are fiercely, fiercely independent. And I, I will say this, Nick, I often tell people there is one bias that I've seen in almost every journalist I've ever met. They have a bias against whoever is in charge right now. Mm -hmm. And so they gave Obama a tough time. They gave Trump a tough time. And they're giving Biden a tough time. Yep. That is the nature of the beat. Um, because aggressive reporting is the way you keep an eye on people in power. Yep, I have a t-shirt at home and I pull it out whenever I'm at home, can't wear it to work, and it just says, question authority. That's what I wear, and, and that's right. in the nature. Doesn't mean you don't show respect for authority, it, you just question it, and, and you're absolutely right. So what, what is your thought then with regard, and what can the media and, and the good journalists who want to be fair and are not taking sides try to do to hold to, to fight back against this fake news thing it seems like whenever someone hears something they don't like about perhaps a candidate they support and like even if it's accurate and backed by the numbers they just say fake news um, and some people let's face it you're never going to change their minds they're so partisan but what can we do as a whole in the press and the media to try to uh, as journalists Restore some of the confidence and that, you know, no, no, no. just because you don't like the, the facts here doesn't mean it's fake news. How do we fight that? Well, first of all, do our jobs well. And I, I will say our because I'm still, I actually still write a column for USA Today and for other newspapers, but do our jobs well. Demonstrate daily that the kind of role we play is critical to the welfare of the community and, and to that of a democracy. There are other things that we should have done, and I, 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 I just, sort of, uh, I'm so disappointed by the, the journalism world for not being more proactive. How in the world, and I see this all the time, do we refer to media in the singular? Um, it happens on broadcasts, it happens in articles, as though it's a single entity. And at, at the very least, say news organizations are upset, or specifically, mm, yeah. who did what. You're right. um, the, the, me the media is angry with the president for, and that's coming from journalists. We gave our critics a handy, short tag to paint us as a monolith when that is very, very damaging. Um, there also has been almost no effort to market American journalism to American people. As you know, Nick, the, the nature of journalism is we, we tend not to beat our chests, we tend not to brag, but some marketing would do a lot of good. To that end, uh, since 2007, I have been running a national campaign called One For All which is a marketing campaign on behalf of these core freedoms. And it is, uh, it's one amendment for all Americans. And I've had the support of uh, journalism organizations in all 50 states. We carry ads, you've seen them in the Tennessee. And, you know, we have Loretta Lynn talking mm -hmm. about the, the importance of freedom mm -hmm. of speech. Um, we, we have uh, the great one as Brad Paisley endorsing yeah. freedom of press. 
Now I'm doing that outside as you know, as a, as a director of the Free Speech Center. Where is the industry in those efforts? The, you know, remember the Got Milk campaign. Why is the industry itself? If the milk industry can get together and take a stand and rehabilitate the image of milk, certainly American media can do that collectively. I, I, I think that's wonderful, and it's a great point. And I think the, the local media, and you know what? You're right. I'm media, and I say that. News organizations, uh, you're absolutely right. The media itself have come up with media and making it a monolith. It is. It's news organizations, and from here on in, and I've been susceptible to it as well. That's, that's what I'm going to call it. But news organizations, especially local news, I think, I hope, and here at News Channel 5, we do what we can through promotions, promos, and stuff, maybe to do some of what you're saying, and it should be more widespread. We'll take a break, talk a little bit more about the First Amendment in our final segment with our fine guest right after this. Stay with us.